Okay, now we're going to uh, start dealing with the, uh, some of the smaller insects, and these will need to be sorted. These haven't been pre-sorted for you as some of the larger insects are. Um, again, the first thing to do is to uh, get an insect, get a label for those specimens. And again, what we do is just cut some, a small number of these off this strip. Again, these, uh, and what we'll do is just put this label in a vial of 80% alcohol, and this will then be where you can store the ones for subsequent mounting. And again, there's lots of material for most of these to go around, and again, we want to sort this in a sort of a consistent manner. The easiest way to start sorting is to uh, just take a small amount of the sample and put it into a, into one of your petri dishes that you have on your desk. I should add that it really uh, it's much better to use a small amount. If you have too much stuff in the petri dish, you simply can't see to what you've got. And again, by now many of you will know the major orders of insects. So what you'll be searching for when you're looking through these samples are things that look different, things that you don't have, or things that look interesting that you will want to uh, put in your collection. So again, just take a maybe a small spoonful of this material, put it out in the petri dish, and then put maybe a little alcohol either from the peat, either from the, the jar or from a squeeze bottle and kind of move shape things around so that you can kind of get a better idea of what's in there. A lot of this is going to be done with your forceps. So again, just move it around and kind of get things organized and then you can see what you've got here. And then you go under. Then you're going to do this sorting actually under the micro, mi microscope. And again, uh, again under low power. Again, as low power as you can get with your microscope. Just kind of put the petri dish here, and then just sort of search through it. You can either do this in a systematic way, that is, start at the top and the bottom, and move back and forth, or you can just look around. And again, let's just have a look here and see what we've got in the microscope. Wow. Tons of stuff. It's quite remarkable. Actually, there's probably certainly more specimens here. Probably enough specimens here to make to make at least half of your insect collection right in this particular uh, dish here that I've dumped out. So if you do find something that looks interesting, again, just pick the specimen out and then drop it into the vial of alcohol. Again, the label is already in here, so you're going to know where that has come from. Again, here's another nice sort of waspy like critter here. You can simply drop that into the vial as well. And again, picking through here. And again, remember, we don't, this, these collections don't require a lot of insects. 40 is the actual number of specimens, the maximum number of specimens you can submit. So again, what you want to do is to spend some time looking around for things that look different. Now that looks different. I think I've seen that before. It's probably a fly. And so, uh, again, I don't have a diptron in my collection yet, so I'll drop that in there. Uh, so search around here. And um, again, we're only dealing with adult insects. There's a number of caterpillars in here. And of course, these aren't really mu of much uh, use to us for this collection, so we'll just leave them be. There's also spiders and things like that, but again, those aren't particularly uh, relevant as well. Okay, well, it looks like uh, one more specimen here. So that's really all we need to do to actually uh, you know, sort the actual specimens. Normally, what we would do is keep these separate, that is, have the, a jar of the sorted and a jar of the unsorted. But given that your partner hasn't looked through this material as well, and given that some other students in the course may look through this material as well, what we're going to do then is just put it back into the general cop jar with the rest of it. So then when you're done, just sort of carefully push it back into the general material. And then seal it up. And again, if you wanted to have another look, then again, stir it up again and give it another go at the, the bottom or other parts of the sample as well. Again, this is the middle size fraction, so again, it's going to have insects in the range of you know, five to ten, five millimeters to maybe a centimeter. So again, that material is in here as well. And again, um, some, they do, do virtually the same thing with the small fraction. Again, the small fraction is in this... Um, 
the uh, another one of these small four ounce vials. And if you look here, you see this stuff is very, very small. Again, this looks like dust and dirt. But again, if you then dump this out into a petri dish as well and search through there, what you're going to find is, is a, 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 a large diversity of specimens as well. Again, some of these smaller orders of insects uh, are going to be in this sample. You should spend a fairly good amount of time with the fine fraction once, the, once you've got all the specimens out of this um, middle-sized fraction. And again, and also when you're not getting anything new and of interest out of the middle-sized fraction. Okay, and then uh, what we do with these specimens, effectively, when you're ready to mount them, you do just what we did before, that is take this material out, and then you can directly pin it the same way as we did before. Now, when you start getting into this size, how small can you put pins through? These specimens here could all be directly pinned. This specimen here, this fly here could be directly pinned. Uh, so these are all in the sort of the size range that allows us to directly pin. With a little practice and by choosing a small enough pin from the uh, collection here, you can easily uh, pin something down to about this size range. When they get much smaller than this, under, under a centimeter, then we have some other techniques that are available for, uh, for pinning those. So again, to set them out on the piece of paper, kind of let the wings dry, try to get them to dry flat by moving them around so they're not, the wings aren't all crumpled up. And then you can just pick up the specimen as we did before, hold it between our fingers, find a relevant size pin, and pop it through. If you like, you can actually look under the microscope for some of these smaller ones, especially if your eyes are getting bad like mine are and actually find the right place to put the insect pin. So again, you can then put the pin through, get it oriented in the correct manner, and prepare the specimen. You can blow in attempts to keep them looking a bit prettier. Okay, so that's what we do with these. And again, uh, this drying technique here is something we'll do with all, pretty much all of the specimens that comes out of alcohol. So this is just a standard piece of paper that you can lay down to dry the specimens on. Okay, um, let's take another break and we'll get on to the pointing of the smallest material.